Well, I have good news and I have bad news. First, the good news. In 2022, the medical misinformation machine known as the Dr. Oz Show will finally go off the air after 13 seasons. Now the bad news. The show is ending because Dr. Mehmet Oz is running for political office. That's right. There is obviously a serious dearth of political representatives in American politics who are reality TV stars. So honestly, it was either Dr. Oz or Snooki. Uh, like Snooki, Dr. Oz is a lifelong resident of New Jersey, but unlike Snooki, just last year he changed his voter registration to his in-law's house in Pennsylvania, just after Pennsylvania's Republican Senator Pat Toomey announced that he would be retiring. What a coincidence that Dr. Oz, a celebrity multimillionaire, would happen to move in with his in-laws just in time to become eligible to run for Senate. As a doctor, with a real degree, I should say, Um, because, you know, normally when I talk about doctors on this channel, they're not real doctors. Dr. Oz is. Um, But as a doctor and a reality TV show host, Dr. Oz does not have any experience serving in office. However, it is worth noting he has experience in Congress. Back in 2014, he was invited to chat with Claire McCaskill about deceptive practices in the advertising of weight loss products. This was relevant to Dr. Oz because he had recently promoted the green coffee bean diet on his TV show, saying there was a new miracle cure that anyone could take to lose weight without diet or exercise, and research showed that it worked. The research in question was a small study of 16 people paid for by Applied Food Sciences, a company that was hoping to sell green coffee bean pills. This study was later retracted after after it was the subject of an FTC complaint, uh, the press release for which called it so hopelessly flawed that no reliable conclusions could be drawn from it. Applied Food Sciences settled with the FTC for $3.5 million. This wasn't out of the ordinary for Dr. Oz's show. He was always promoting some kind of pseudoscience. But in this case, it became an even bigger issue when the FTC went after the expert Dr. Oz featured on that green coffee bean episode. Lindsay Duncan, who claimed to be a doctor despite only having alleged degrees in naturopathy from an unaccredited university. The Dr. Oz show reached out to Duncan, asking if he knew anything about green coffee beans. He answered in the affirmative, despite having no actual idea what was going on with them. He then rushed to have his own company start selling the beans and edited Dr. Oz's own script to have him direct viewers to Duncan's website to buy the supplements. Dr. Oz just did this, I guess, without asking any questions. And then Duncan did it again by promoting Black Raspberry on another show as a top cancer-fighting supplement. So it wasn't exactly a shock that after several FTC investigations into just one of Dr. Oz's now 1,600-plus episodes, Congress would want to talk to the man himself. So here's how that went for him. I don't get why you need to say this stuff because you know it's not true. I mean, I've tried to really do a lot of research in preparation for this trial, and the scientific community is almost monolithic against you in terms of the efficacy of the three products that you call miracles. And when you call a product a miracle, and it's something you can buy, and it's something that gives people false hope, I just don't understand why you need to do, go there. That there isn't magic in a, in a bottle, that there isn't a magic pill, that there isn't some kind of magic root or ice berry or raspberry ketone that's going to all of a sudden make it not matter that you're not moving and eating a lot of sugar and carbohydrates. I mean, I, 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 do you disagree with any of these seven? Senator McCaskill, I, I, I know the seven. I say those things on my show all the time. Well, then why would you say that something is a miracle in a bottle? I I know you feel that you're a victim, but sometimes conduct invites being a victim. And I think if you would be more careful, uh, maybe you wouldn't be victimized quite as frequently. Sadly, Claire McCaskill's no longer in the Senate, but I'm sure that her other colleagues from the Consumer Protection Panel would be thrilled to welcome Dr. Oz back into their hallowed halls. And by the way, I don't want you to think that Oz's problems began and ended with a coffee bean weight loss scam. 
he has platformed uh, so many quacks that honestly he's giving Oprah a run for her money. And by giving her a run for her money, I mean actually just literally giving Oprah loads of money because she platformed him on her show, then gave him his own show. And honestly, the whole thing is just like a pyramid scheme for quacks. For instance, many years ago, Oprah had the incredible bonkers quack Dr. Christiane Northrup on her show. And I remember it distinctly because Dr. Northrup, real doctor, I think, um, had the entire audience stand up and direct their psychic energies to their vajayjays. Direct quote. Vajayjays, because we're children. Northrop went on to appear on Dr. Oz's show discussing the wisdom of menopause. And then in 2020, she became better known for spreading COVID conspiracy theories as one of the 12 most prolific peddlers of misinformation on Facebook, according to a report from the Center for Countering Digital Hate. Also on that list, Joseph Mercola, himself a past guest on The Dr. Oz Show. Mercola sells supplements, so he's a natural fit to be an expert on the show to drive naive viewers to his website to give him money. Mercola is virulently anti-vaccine, not necessarily because he doesn't understand the science of vaccines, but more likely, in my opinion, because he can't sell vaccines on his website. Mercola also can't sell actual cancer treatments on his website, so instead, he once tried to sell a tanning bed that he claimed could cure cancer. A tanning bed. Speaking of Facebook misinformation, remember a few weeks back when I talked about Hacker X, who admitted to helping build a misinformation empire that directly led to the spread of anti-vaccine nonsense, as well as uh, violent far-right fascist rhetoric? And remember how that empire turned out to have been run by Mike Adams, uh, the health ranger creator of Natural News? Well, guess who else has received glowing reviews from Dr. Oz? That's right, Mike Adams, who went on Dr. Oz's show uh, as a whistleblower who found poison in America's food. Mike Adams is not afraid to take on controversy, this is really all about. buck conventional medical wisdom, or lead a revolution when it comes to your health. I think the public's being hoodwinked in many cases. All of this would be bad enough, but it turns out that Dr. Oz has, in the past two years, completely dropped his previous and apparently phony I'm just presenting both sides narrative of alt medicine and anti-vaxxers as he's done the rounds on Fox News to promote whatever unproven COVID treatment was currently favored by Trump and his fellow Republicans. And much like he switched from New Jersey to Pennsylvania to have a shot at the GOP nomination for a Senate seat, he also switched from being openly supportive of abortion rights as a fundamental human right to being in favor of overturning Roe v. Wade. Curious. Now he's almost completely in line with all of the batshit views of Trump Republicans, save for one. Dr. Oz is a Muslim. At least he used to be. Uh, I guess let's wait and see what religion he believes in by the time the primaries roll around. It doesn't sound like he has too much of a problem evolving to survive. I mean, if he still believes in evolution. 